Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Red House Lake here in Allegheny State Park, the largest contiguous state park in New York State. And we are here at Sunrise at a location that I've never been uh, to for Sunrise. And if you guys can tell, there is a lot of fog rolling in. I could see it while I was driving down here, like really thick fog. The skies are looking somewhat clear, but there should be some clouds rolling in uh, a little bit after sunrise, which we do have sort of another angle I want to go visit after we shoot this spot, which is on the other side of the lake directly across from where I am now. Um, but I think the fog will kind of make up for what clouds we don't get. Um, but it's just like otherworldly out here. I don't know how else to describe it. I feel like I'm in a dream right now. That's how amazing these conditions are. So I'm gonna take a few shots right now just of these, that little island I was just showing you guys just now and uh, we'll kind of take it from there. So yeah, as you guys can see this little it's not really necessarily an island, it's more like a small peninsula that kind of juts out from the side of the lake. Which you actually can walk a little trail that takes you to the end of that. There's like a little park bench there, I don't know if you guys can see that super well, but that's just kind of my composition right now. I've got a almost perfect reflection, which with the 6 second shutter I'm having to get right now, because I'm at uh, f8 ISO 100, not doing any brackets because the light is still just perfectly soft so I'm just doing single exposures although I probably could do just a minus two or a minus one zero plus one just to be safe I guess but I'm kind of cropped in a little bit around 35 millimeters not completely wide open and it just looks incredible I really don't know what else to say and I can already tell I'm really going to like this shot a lot because it's just going to be very unique compared to a lot of photos that I have in my portfolio. It's just very soft and dreamlike, very minimalistic. And I think that's just going to, like, it's going to end up being one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. I can already tell. Like, there's so much depth and atmosphere in the scene right now. Like... It's just so amazing. As one of my favorite photographers puts it, Nigel Danson, doesn't get much better than this. It really doesn't. So sunrise is probably in about 15 minutes or so, and we're starting to get a lot of great color out here in the scene. And I'm thinking I might do a panoramic photo here to get the bridge over there in the distance in the shot because I, I I don't think I can get wide enough with just one photo to get everything so that might be the move here in a second one more bracket and then we're switching to the pano gimbal because I still really like this composition so I want to like switch back to it and we, I might also just go to the other side of the lake here in just a couple minutes because the colors are looking really nice and if we can catch the early sun and get some of those early colors because I don't want to get over there too late. I want the light to still be soft, but yeah, I'm, this this is where I wish if I had a second camera body, this would be perfect because I could do one with the pan and one with this, but we got to work with what we got. And I've switched to doing a five-step bracket because I do not want to blow out any of these highlights. I want to make sure I get everything right and uh, don't regret it later in post. But. I'll show you guys right now just a few previews of some of these brackets so you can see how and everything is looking like. We've got like the perfect mirrored reflection there. I really like the composition. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, we're going to switch uh, over to the Pano Gimbal now. And the Pano Gimbal loves nothing more than to be on uneven ground. It's a good thing I brought my boots with me today because I have to get into the water a little bit just so I can get out in front of this little uh, plastic dock here because I don't want that in the panel but 
stepping a couple feet into the water, I can get a fully uninterrupted view of the scene, which is great. So we're taking a five step exposure bracketed panel. It's like five or six panels. Surprisingly, the tripod sitting in the water on the sand and gravel is actually pretty level. So fingers crossed. And I'm trying to walk very lightly so I don't uh, disturb the water a ton. got the pano, we're gonna take the gimbal off. We're gonna maybe do some cropped in shots at 70 mil and uh, then we're probably gonna head over to the other side. Also gotta change batteries. Okay, so just off that way where you guys can see the fog kind of rolling down off the hills over there that is kind of one of the compositions I ended up getting. I do have the island, this sort of really far leaning tree in the shot as well, but I do kind of like it. This is where I wish I had a long lens, which I should hopefully be getting one soon, a 24 to 200, which would be perfect on a day like today to crop it on some of those details. But with that being said, we moved to the other side of the lake, the same side that I was on, the same spot actually that I was on when we did the star trails here. And yeah, I think that was the same episode that uh, we had the Kinzu point failure, but we're going back on the other side right now and we'll see what we can see. Okay, so I've settled on another pano because again, I'm just not wide enough to be able to capture this island and the very distant hillside over there, which is just getting hit. And you guys could probably see it in the video, just getting hit with a little bit of that early morning sunlight. And the sun is already up by now, but I think it is behind some clouds, which is totally fine by me because the fog is hanging around. So I'm not going to complain about that. I was just thinking on my drive over here coming down this road that uh, maybe a shot from over there would look pretty amazing with like a nice starburst. But like I said, with the clouds, I don't think we'll get that. I was literally driving on a small little road by going over that bridge that I was showing you guys earlier. And it does provide some pretty nice views looking down that way. And I figured I might as well mention this now too. Uh, my settings currently are F9 ISO 64 aperture priority mode so the shutter is just automatically metered by the camera and since i don't think i've mentioned it since the first episode on this channel i'm using the nodal ninja 6 pano gimbal and i like it quite a bit it is a really great tool and if you've got an extra 350 dollars laying around that's burning a hole in your pocket and you want to take some great panoramic photos I would definitely recommend this. I know Really Right Stuff also makes a Pano uh, gimbal. It's way more expensive, and this is turning into a gear review now, I guess, but I think this is a great uh, option, especially if you're on a budget. Yeah, see, if I had a long lens, I would zoom in right on that little pile of debris sitting right in the water there. I suppose I could at 70 millimeters and maybe crop in. So I gotta remember to do that before I leave. point this out to people actually still leaving garbage at a place like this in the year 2023 that blows my mind
Okay, so here we are down on the shoreline. Unfortunately, the duck decided to fly away, which is understandable. But right now, the shot that I have is close up here on these wildflowers. We've got some brilliant goldenrod. It's everywhere this time of year, and it looks so, so good. Some ferns and some lilies leading out into the lake and then into the big hill in the background there. And there's still a little bit of fog lingering around, especially some on the surface of the lake. And I was going to just shoot it kind of cropped in, but I really wasn't thinking about composition. And then I stopped and said, how can I make the composition better? And I think getting this here in the foreground is going to really tie the photo together. I got something very similar uh, by the island over there, which I'll put that photo up on the screen really quickly so you guys can see what I'm kind of talking about. I'm also at f5.6 trying a focus stack because I want to see if it's going to be any sharper than per se like an f8 or an f10, uh, which is normally what I usually shoot. And I'm doing three, uh, three stack focus bracket. One for really close, one for kind of in the middle, and then one for far out. And just in case I mess something up, we're going to go up to F9 and still do another focus stack. And we're also bracketing as well. Five-step bracket. Don't want to blow out any highlights. And for this one, it should only be a two-step focus stack. Really sharp foreground. Really sharp background. Just fire off a couple more of these. We're joined by our friend, the gray catbird, also. But uh, I think we'll be heading out of here pretty shortly because I am hungry. Welcome back to the studio, everybody. It is finally time for me to share with you guys all of the amazing photos that I got during our sunrise adventure at Red House Lake in Allegheny State Park. It's been a little over a week since I recorded everything you guys just saw earlier in the video. That's just about how much time it's taken me to get all of these photos finally edited. I had a lot of stuff going on over the week, and just yesterday, I had enough time just to sit down and work through all of these photos, and I am so happy with how they all came out. And I still actually have probably a decent amount of images left in Lightroom that I haven't worked on yet that I'd like to work on. And those probably won't make it in this video, but you guys should be able to see them eventually at some point on my Facebook and Instagram pages and eventually on my website, which I am working on a new website via Smug Mug. So I'm very excited for that to be up and running as well. I'll give you guys some information on that as well on my social medias on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I post the most and where I post photos most often, so definitely check me out there. But we do have, like I said, quite a few photos to go over, and we are actually not going to be going over any post-processing stuff that I did to these photos. Uh, I'll save that for a separate video if anybody wants to know how I did any of the edits on any of these shots. Just feel free to let me know down in the comments below, and I'd be happy to make a separate video going over the post-processing workflow on some of these images. I also have a few bonus photos we'll take a look at as well from an astrophotography outing. I did probably just three or four days after our sunrise trip to the same spot, and those photos came out really well. So let's hop right into our first photo. All right, so here is the first photo. This one I don't really have a title for just yet. I think I actually only have a title for one photo in this bunch here, but my favorite thing about this shot is the goldenrod that is basically dead center at the bottom third of the frame. And this is one of those photos that I actually ended up doing a focus stack on. And I'm so glad I did because if I zoom in here, you guys can see the incredible detail that would have been otherwise lost in these grasses had I not done a photo stack. We have the really sharp edges of the blades of grass themselves, the colors, not to mention the droplets of morning dew, but you can also see spider webs intertwined throughout this whole 
little area of foliage and even some goldenrod galls, which are some insects that actually burrow into the stems of these goldenrods, which is a really cool thing that you'll see this time of year. And uh, so I also think I talked about doing like an F5.6 focus stack and an F9 focus stack just to see what the difference was. I did think the F6 or the F5.6 looked a little bit sharper, but when it came to putting those photos together in post processing, I noticed it was giving Photoshop a lot harder of a time when it came to stacking the images together to create a seamless photo stack at F5.6 than I was at F.9 because it was doing a really bad job blending this stuff in here. So I ended up just sort of manually brushing it in and the details that were soft in the water, you really couldn't notice to begin with because anything that's showing up in the reflection is gonna be a little bit softer just via the nature of the reflections themselves. So I think it went together to create a pretty seamless focus stack. And one of the things I did this photo as well is I ended up cropping a little bit off of the left here because there was too much of an open gap I felt like between this tree and the tree that was next to it that kind of was distracting you and kind of pulling your eye a little bit more towards this side of the frame instead of taking your eye out like through this flower here out into the water and then into the distant details so I felt like that was a bit distracting so I ended up cropping it in a little bit and I'm glad I did that because I think the photo looks a lot better now and that's the one thing I'll do is like I'll like fully edit a photo and I won't do any cropping to it and I'll just like come back to it the next day usually like sleep on the photos right and usually the next day I can see like okay this isn't looking right or you know this should be cropped this way because I what I find is like the less time you the more time you spend not looking at the photo like it gives you a much fresher perspective when you come back and look at it after so many hours of not seeing the photo right um, because when you're looking at it for a long time you get used to like seeing just the photo and where everything is but when you take a break you come back and look at it you're like okay well maybe that should be cropped this way or maybe this area is a little too warm or uh, it's a little too green here or maybe this doesn't look super great sharpened or you know etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's what I kind of did with this photo and a lot of these photos I ended up sleeping on a lot of them and I just felt like this photo could benefit from a crop and uh, even if I zoom in all the way here you can see we have the bridge out there I think there was a car going down the road which I had to clone out which is not such a big deal and uh, all the details there in the tree um, you know pretty sharp for being that far off in the distance and then we also have like this bonus reflection here on the right which I really like too um, I was like, you know, does that something I want to crop too? But you know, when you crop this out, you're also cropping this stuff out of the bottom. And I wanted this bottom part to be as untouched as possible in terms of cropping because I wanted as much of that green grass sticking up and that goldenrod, like I said, right there, dead center. I think actually if this flower had bloomed, it maybe wouldn't look as good as it does without it bloom because this one just takes center stage and it looks amazing that way. So let's take a look at the next photo. So this is another shot that I have yet to name, but I'm sure I'll find a title for it soon. This was that little pile of debris that was out in the lake that I was talking to you guys about when we were on the southern side of the lake on that platform. I was talking about cropping in, you know, zooming on all the way to 70 millimeters with this. And I'm really glad I did. I think the landscape or the, sorry, the portrait orientation of this works really good. I did take a couple landscape orientation shots, but I don't think any of them look nearly as good as the portrait orientation. I also did a little bit of sort of like selective dehaze, like a little linear uh, gradient mask up here at the top and the bottom to kind of pull out some of those faint blues that are up there. Um, otherwise, you really couldn't see them that much. And um, it, it kind of like didn't look as good, I felt like, because I really liked that color of just the blue sky and how it reflected in the water. And once I did that, I thought it started to bring the photo together just a little bit more. Although if some people wanted to leave it more, uh, you know, at taking away dehaze, making it look a little less, um, you know, less able to see the actual sky itself, I could see that possibly working as well. But for this photo, I really liked doing what I did with it. And um, I actually didn't do any sharpening at all because the only thing I wanted to sharpen would be this here and nothing else. But, you know, painting that in would have been kind of annoying and you know I just don't think it needed it and uh, we also had some nice uh, some color actually show up from those green grasses and those trees way out in the distance where you can see that road going through and uh, I, I kind of like it um, I had another angle where this was slightly more to the right but I think I like this more just a little bit off centered than being more so towards the right and yeah that's that photo really not much else to say about it very simple very minimalistic photo and very happy with it
Now this shot right here came out way better than I was expecting it to. Uh, this was that photo that I was set up for towards the very end of being out in the field. This was a shot that I originally had been a little bit more cropped in and I didn't really like it as much because I felt like everything, the, all the details of like all the plants and the lilies, the water and the hill, I felt like it was all a little bit too compressed. And then when I zoomed out, I felt like it gave just everything, all the elements in the photo, just a little bit more room to breathe. And this is again, another photo I'm really glad I decided to do a photo stack on because all of these ferns and flowers and goldenrods down here and asters, right? Uh, they just pop very, very well. Uh, with a focus stack and even if you go down here in the very bottom right corner where you're going to have things being very very soft just because of the nature of the lenses um, you know it's not super soft it is a little bit soft down here but as you get a little bit more towards the center um, you know and on right it definitely gets a little bit sharper and uh, with these grasses and these flowers hanging directly out over the water uh, photoshop did have another hard time trying to do a focus stack of these just by using the auto um, blend layers feature um, so I just kind of ended up doing in some cases like a radial or a linear gradient mask to try to get everything as good as I could possibly get it. But I think it did a pretty good job for the most part. I don't think there's any parts that are like super out of focus that all of a sudden in focus. Um, so I think it did, a, again, a decent job um, in, that, in that regard. And everything else I think looks great. This hill out here looks super amazing. It almost looks like a mountain kind of. And there's just a little bit of fog kind of rolling in from the right there and a little bit on the other side. I also did a lot with like messing around with white balances. I tried to make this side of the hill a little bit warmer and this other side a little bit cooler. So you can kind of get that warm and cool contrast going on. And I'm lucky and grateful that I did uh, that five step exposure bracket because I was able to not blow out any of the highlights uh, that were up here. So you can actually still see the blue sky and uh, those highlights and those white clouds there. So happy with this one really great like low-key one of my favorites that i took and let's take a look at the next one all right so here is the next image we're going to take a look at and i think this one is probably my second favorite that i got really unexpected sort of compositional find here during our trip to red house i thought i was going to like the photos that i got in our first spot and then when we were set up at that platform on the water i was like i'll probably won't like anything else more than what I got in those two spots. But man, was I wrong. And I'm so glad I walked over here and just explored my surroundings because this composition was just sitting there waiting for me to capture it. And this has high potential to be uh, the spot I set up for first the next time I go here to shoot sunrise. I think it'll probably be exactly this spot. I might frame it a little bit differently, maybe to include the trees there on the left a little bit more. But other than that, I really like it. And I can only imagine what this might look like with an incredible array of sunrise colors in the clouds like we were getting um, very, very early on when we were shooting that peninsula, which I'm so excited to show you guys that one. But there's just so much going on here. You have the perfect cluster of evergreens on the left, the rolling hills, uh, the sky, the details in the clouds themselves that I was able to pull out using a little bit of tonal contrast, the reflection in the lake, the mist. Uh, or the fog, whatever you want to call it, that's just slowly evaporating off the lake there, giving it an ethereal look. And then the beautiful green hill side right there that kind of leads down um, to the uh, sort of wildflowers and bushes right there lining the side of the lake. It looks really, really clean. And yeah, that's really all I got to say. It's, it's very simple, yet there's still a lot of complex details going into this photo. It's kind of like minimalistic, but not at the same time. I really don't know how to describe it. But I just really, really like everything in this photo. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the next. All right, so I know I said the last photo was my second favorite. So you might be wondering what my absolute favorite shot from our outing is. And that would be this one right here. This one I actually do have a title for. I've titled it Lost in Reverie. And if you don't know what that means, definitely look up a definition for it. I'll put it up on the screen here as well. But I think that word fits the description not only of this photo itself, but how I felt in the moment and how I felt getting to experience these conditions in person. And it was definitely dreamlike. I even think I said that earlier on in the video. But what things do I like about this photo? Well, first and foremost, we have the amazing colors in the sky, which I'm always a sucker for. Like you give me amazing sunrise and sunset colors, like I'm there like 99% of the time. 
regardless of what the foreground might be. Like I just love getting to see those colors. Whether or not I can get a great photo out of them, that's another thing, but I just love getting to see them in person. And we got so lucky that these clouds ended up rolling in when they did. And not only do we have them up above, but with this amazing reflection we have, you can see the details and the colors and the clouds down in the water too, where we have these pinks, the blues, and the oranges and the reds over here. And there's also sort of like a very nice contrasty element going on in this photo. You have the warm tones on the left where the sun is coming up, where the fog is kind of burned off a little bit more, and the uh, it's more brighter on the side of the photo. And then on the other side of the photo, where the, you know it's farther away from where the sun is coming up, where the fog has yet to burn off as much, it's a little bit cooler, it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit more mysterious, right? Especially the distant shoreline here where the trees kind of just slowly fade into obscurity. That right there has got to be one of my favorite things about this photo. On top of everything else that's going on. Like, it's just, I love this photo so much. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the other ones. All right, so this next photo is a pano that we took when we were on the southern side of the lake. This one I do not have a title for. And also one thing I noticed after looking at that last photo with how magenta it is, when you look at other photos, they tend to look like really, really green for a little bit. So you got to kind of let your eyes adjust. I know that's one thing that was kind of happening to me, but this photo here, obviously you can see it's a great pano and we get to see so much of the scene, so much of what I was able to see when I was there, um, all the way from the right side of the frame where you have the intensity of that rising sun breaking through the fog, illuminating it, giving this amazing golden color, and uh, you can see the clouds in the sky as well getting graced by some of that light. And then on the opposite side of the photo, it's still a little bit darker. It's still a little bit cooler, right? And uh, this is one of those hot, cold elements too that I was trying to go for, that I've been trying to go for in a lot of the other photos where on the right side where you have the sun coming up, it's a little bit warmer. On the left side where it's not, you know, it's a little bit cooler. And uh, it's, it's like a very almost like two-tone photo, right? And this photo I did crop a deal too off of the bottom because I wasn't able to get a full reflection of this island on the bottom. The uh, middle tree was kind of cut off before the top, and I didn't really like the way that looked. I figured if I was going to leave all of that down at the bottom, I'd want um, a complete reflection and not like a partial reflection on the bottom. So I just ended up cropping up a little bit to kind of bring your eyes up a little bit more and out of the water where the reflection is, although we still get to see some of it here, which I'm really happy with like the hill on the right side, the building on the left, and everything in between with the trees. So yeah, I mean, not too much to say about this photo. Really, really like it as well. And again, this is another spot which could be a potential uh, sunrise location. Um, so we get to see more of those clouds at sunrise, right? And this was also supposed to have one more panel here on the right side. You can see where this sort of uh, little bit of the coast kind of gets cut off abruptly. I did have a, one more panel of this uh, panel that just Lightroom would not stitch for whatever reason. Like, it would not do it. I tried stitching from, like, here on to include that one, and then it worked. And then when I tried to do them all together, including those ones, it just would not work. I don't know what Lightroom's problem was. And, in fact, there was another panel that I did um, from this side of the lake a um, little bit later on when the sun was up a little bit higher uh, that I was also talking about doing in the vlog that also Lightroom just would not stitch. Um, I had to use a software called uh, PT GUI, which I can't actually use because I have to buy the license for it, which I'm not interested in doing at the moment. Um, but one day when I do, I definitely hope to actually finally stitch that pano together uh, because Lightroom, like I said, would just not do it. And yeah, there you have it. Those are all the photos that we got from that outing alone. But like I said, I had a couple of bonus astrophotography photos that I took from roughly the same location a few nights later. This is one of them, as you can see here. I don't have a title for this, but this was up on the right side of where I shot uh, this photo up on the road. There's a little bit of a bicycle path that you can sort of go down. Um, which would also be another thing to walk during sunrise just to check all the angles. But I really like the nice leading line of the road and ended up getting some car trails going down the road as well, which is something I really was looking to get because I felt like that would just make the shot just like 10 times better. And not only did we have very prominent Milky Way, but we also have some air glow, which is a really interesting phenomenon you can capture uh, where it looks like Aurora Borealis. It's not. Um, it's just sort of like... Um, particles in the air reacting to form protons that you know show up as light 
and it has this sort of green glow. Um, so this is the one shot that I had, and then this is the other one that I got where you can still see that air glow band on the left, and this is a much more wider shot, obviously, in landscape orientation. Still have the same thing going there on the right side of the photo of those car trails going over the road, over the bridge, and uh, sort of how it reflects in the water there. This one I like quite a bit too. I'm not sure which one I like better at the moment, um, but I like them both just enough. So yeah, those are those two astro photography shots. Happy with those. And that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you've yet to do so. It's greatly appreciated. And until next time, we'll see you.